YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is McPato and this is McPato PC. And today I'm bringing you an unboxing of obviously what's in this box. And uh, give you guys a spoiler, this is gonna go with my reference Vega 64. Uh, I've been trying to push the limits in terms of performance. And while it performs real well, the stock cooler is really loud and I'm at the point now where I think it's time to swap out the stock cooler with something aftermarket. I may do a video in the future on all the options that are available to anyone with a reference uh, Vega 64 or 56 who wants to keep their temperatures low and maximize the performance. Uh, this is for me the second step in my process in trying to get good temperatures and great performance. Uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'll put a uh, card up in the corner here. Uh, I recently did a swap of the thermal paste or the thermal interface material on the stock reference uh, Sapphire Vega 64. And I found that for myself, the, the difference wasn't uh, what I was hoping for in terms of cooling differential. So I got this right here in an attempt to help cool it off even more. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. Uh, I should add this is in no way sponsored by Newegg, but if you live in Canada, this item is on sale right now and has been for a while, uh, which I feel like maybe they're trying to sell out the stock. Um, but anyway, and this is my first, uh, second unboxing, I guess if you count the Thermaltake U71 unboxing video that I did. All right, so what I've got here is the Morpheus 2 from, uh, I forget the name of the company, right? Rigentech. Rigentech. So essentially, this is a air cooler that you can add to a wide variety of graphics cards. It happens to be compatible with the Vega 64. And I understand there is a Vega 64 version of this cooler. Uh, this is not that. This is just the regular Morpheus 2. But uh, we're going to open the box, go through what comes in it. And then we'll see what we talk about after that. So I'm just going to change the camera angle and we're going to go over the parts. All right, guys, this is going to be my third or fourth attempt here at this unboxing. Uh, my goal is to keep it short for you guys to keep you engaged, interested in what's going on. So, and again, this is part one of three videos in this series where I will be unboxing, installing, and then comparing the performance of this cooler compared to the stock cooler on my reference Sapphire Vega 64. This also would work obviously on a Vega 56 with the reference style um, PCB and cooler, etc. So without further ado, let's get into what you get in the bag and we'll conclude this video there. You get this, uh, I believe it's aluminum retention bracket for the back of your GPU, as well as a heat sink, also aluminum with some push pins. Uh, my understanding is that that is for your VRMs. Depending on your card, it may or may not function as intended. Keep that in mind. Uh, also worth noting, a lot of people with a Vega card, or some people with a Vega card, I don't know if it's a lot, don't use this retention bracket. They use the stock retention bracket. And I think that permits you to then use your uh, factory backplate. We'll cover that in the installation video definitively, but that's what I've read on uh, various forms. So I probably won't use this one. I'll probably use the factory retention bracket. Next up, you get uh, obviously the mechanism to install it onto the GPU itself. And you get four fan clips 
there's actually eight here, but four, depending whether or not you're using regular thickness fans, which these here are. These are Corsair ML120s, and I will be using these on this cooler, so I'll be using the regular bracket, but if you have thin or low profile fans, there's also uh, the installation brackets for those fans. That is what we have. Uh, there's also some screws in here and some hexagonal spacers, I guess, for installing it to your GPU. In the install video, I'll tell you guys exactly what to use for Vega cards, okay? Uh, again, that wouldn't be covered in the manual because officially this wasn't built for Vega. It just happens that it works with Vega. So I'll tell you guys what to use for that. In terms of heat sinks, you get square heat sinks, which would be compatible with something like uh, GDDR memory or your chokes. And then you also get slimmer, uh, thinner. Uh, oh, you do get so you get the square ones that are quite high and the uh, low profile square ones as well. So that's kind of nice. Then you get your thinner ones for again VRM cooling. And for installing these heat sinks, they give you quite a few of these pre sized thermal pads. And I believe they are also uh, thermal adhesive. So you can stick the chokes, or sorry, the heat sinks right on the other side, obviously, of this uh, adhesive pad, and it'll stick. Whether it sticks well or not, I will test in my installation and give you guys whatever information I have on that. Then there's something here that looks a little bit like foam or rubber. I think that's for the fans to prevent vibration noise. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I'll cover that in the installation as well. And finally, you do get uh, the installation manual in multiple languages. Looks well written, looks pretty clear. Some good illustrative uh, pictures as well. And here's your actual cooler, the heat sink itself. Six uh, heat pipes, looks to be aluminum on the top here. And I believe a copper or nickel covered copper base plate. Uh, so again, I will confirm that in the installation video. But that will conclude the unboxing portion. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Consider subscribing and liking this video. And that will keep you up to date on future videos from myself, McPato. And uh, make sure that notification bell is checked off. You'll get the first uh, chance to watch, obviously, part two of the installation and part three, the testing and comparison of the Morpheus 2 versus the stock reference cooler for Vega 64. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time. Until then, bye-bye.